Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining another uh, Like Minds webinar. Um, so thanks for taking time to join today. Today we'll be looking at um, a slightly different topic. It's more personal in nature. Um, looking at personal financial management or money management. You might have been to one or two similar courses in the past, um, but I want to hope that today is going to be quite unique as we have um, very, very good speakers that will be doing some justice into this topic. Um, so just a little housekeeping rules. Once you join the, um, the Zoom, always try and show your um, the, either your phones or your if you're coming from a laptop, your mic is always put on mute, so avoiding from of, um, noise in the background. And um, there'll be each of each of the speakers will have like 40 minutes uh, session to to give a topic, uh, to give um, a discussion on the topic. And um, after the second speaker finishes, then we will now open up the session for some Q and A. Uh, Q and A. During that session, you feel free to. Um, send the questions on the chat button or feel free to unmute on, on, on your mic and um, ask the questions for those of you who are bold enough uh, to do that. So thanks again for, for joining. Um, this is being put together by Like Minds. We are um, a professional network um, African, uh, of African origin based in the diaspora, based in London. Uh, we, are, we aim at supporting ourselves through networking manpower development. Uh, we've been meeting for the past uh, 10 years and we've had some huge success stories. So if you feel like you want to be part of this uh, professional network, feel free to touch base with myself. Uh, feel free to visit our website and um, we're we'll, we'll happy to have you on board. Okay, uh, so without further ado, uh, we will invite the first speaker, um, uh, me, uh, Adi Oshun. Um, we'll be given the first topic. Um, uh, just a little intro, uh, Ni, I think without doing much uh, topic, <laughs> so I think I'll need to explain it before them himself, but he's, he's very much um, a money management coach, a uh, business strategist. He's also an author. Um, but I'll need to talk a little bit about himself and how he got to this point. Then from there, he starts delivering the topic. So, Ni, over to you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I want to say thank you to the like, like minds organization for inviting me. I don't take any, any invitation for granted. And I just want to say thanks. I hope I'll be able to do justice to, to the belief that you have in me. Good evening, everybody. My name is Niyi Adi Oshun. I'm a money management coach. To begin with, I actually, I, on my daily basis, I write software, financial software for banks, building societies, and insurance companies. But on the other side, I speak on financial freedom, because there are always two parts to life, the defense and the attack. Just like in the football, football field, what we do to survive and what we do to progress. Most people stay in the mid midfield. Anyway, uh, I don't want to say too much about myself. I've been speaking on financial freedom since 2005, and I've been able to write six books up to date, Three of them are specifically on financial freedom, while the other three are on other, other issues. I speak on success and growth. I live in the UK. I live in Basel Lane in Essex. Today, um, I'm going to share uh, my screen with you. Please, if you can see, it's just let's, let me know. I'll be sharing my screen with you. I'm going to be speaking to you to personal finance, but I'll, I'll be speaking specifically on clarity and control. If you can see my screen, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, good, thank you very much. I'll be speaking on clarity and control. Now, money is very, very important to all of us. Money is very, very important to all of us. Uh, and that's why I say money matters. Money matters a lot. It doesn't just matter, it matters a lot. Money speaks to us. But to most people, money just says hello and goodbye. It just comes in and it goes out. We want money to be able to say hello. How are you doing today? Money to sit down where we are. You understand? We don't want the money hello and goodbye one. Money can speak to us and money speaks about us. What money says about us will show everybody our values, 
our principles, our priorities, and our commitments. Those are the things I want us to check today. For most people, there is a, there is a way that most of us look at money. The way we view it, that's the way we react to money. Some people react to money as if money means power. To them, money means power. If they have money, they are powerful. To some other people, money means security. If they have money, they're secure. For the young ones, most of the young ones, money means independence. That their first job, they think they've arrived. You understand? And for some other people, money means control. Because there are a lot of things that you can use money for. You can use money as a tool and you can use it as a weapon. When money becomes control on your side, it means you are beginning to use it as a weapon. And those, those are the things, whatever you use money for, it actually shows what, what your values are. Some people, use, some people see money as status symbol or as, um, as it, it, it gives them their self-esteem. When, when, when they have money, then everything is all good. The way you use your money will reveal your, your principles, your values, your priorities, and your commitment. Now, I want to move on to something. I, I said I want to talk to you about clarity and control. Now, clarity is the beginning of control. If you are not clear about how you think about money, if you are not clear about what you think money is, if you are not clear about how you're supposed to deal with your with your debt or anything like that. If right. if you sorry, sorry somebody's um go. okay good I'm back. If you are not clear about what money is to you, you'll not be able to control it properly. Now let me let me give you um I like stories. I was brought up on stories. My grandparents were storytellers. So were my parents. And somehow, I became a storyteller myself. And the book I read the most has a lot of stories. I will tell you one of the first stories I learned when I started going to Sunday school. Now, when I say Sunday school, people will think, okay, he's going to talk, talk to you about Bible. Yes, I'm going to talk, talk to you about Bible. But because I'm going to pick this book, I know most of, you, most of you know the story about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, Forbidden Fruit, uh, the sin serpent came into the garden, the sin God kicked them out and stuff like that. You know all those ones. If you know that story, you will know this one I'm talking about because this story came before Adam and Eve arrived. I want, I want to speak to you concerning the creation. The creation. And now, I want to say three things here now. I'm not here to preach to you, so don't be afraid. People who, who, who are evolutionists, if you don't believe in creation, just take this story as a story. And there are some people who don't believe in God. Just take it as a story too. But I, for your sake, I will call God the creator, but with a capital C. All right? So my story begins like this. This is the way even the Bible begins. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the, the spirit of God was hovering over the face of, of the waters. Now, this, if you read this, these verses, there's these are two verses here. If you read them, all you can see is that it's darkness. There is no form to, to the earth. It was shapeless. It was void. There was nothing there. What I'm looking at is chaos. This is chaos. And this is the way the finances of, of a lot of people are. Chaotic. They don't know their left from their right. They don't know what is up, what is down. In darkness, you don't know if you, are, if you are falling unless you touch the ground. That's when you know you're on the ground. You understand? If you're in total darkness, you put your hand in front of your face, you may not see it. You can't see anything. This is chaos. You, you understand what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say? Now, when you see, when, in this kind of situation, what do you see? What do you see? It is chaos. What should you do about it? Don't panic. Because the reason why I want to use this story is, is just to show you how you can control your finances but you need to be clear about what you're seeing. What do you see? Chaos, no problem. What should you do? Don't panic, don't worry. What do you want? You are going to have to decide that. And my, my, first, my fourth question is how do you get there? Your plan, we're gonna talk about planning today. Now I'll tell you something, a story about myself, because this situation was where I found myself on Wednesday, the 10th of January, 2001. 
I was there, married, with three children, living in a council, council house, which I did not own, which if they kick me out any, any time, I will, I will be homeless, because I had nothing. I had no savings, two loans, four credit cards. Because in those days, they used to send me credit cards, and I, and I thought the credit cards complaints, I, I thought they loved me. So they will send those things to me and I will, I will collect it. And I use, I use credit. I mean, this was bad until that day when I saw that, look, I am living in a, I'm, I'm living in, in a chaotic life and something has got to change. See, what you can tolerate, you can't change. If you, if you, if, if you are in a particular situation and that situation doesn't actually make a difference to what you're doing, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't move you. You, you can't change that situation. You cannot. And, that's, and this is where we're going. So I'm talking about creation. And day by day, we'll be, we'll be picking this, these things day by day. Now, day one, what did God say? He saw chaos when he, when, he, when he looked down here. And what did he do? He said, let there be light. Wednesday, Wednesday the 10th of January 2001 was my let there be light day. God is God. We are not God. What he did was to call the whole of himself. Let there be light. I want to actually see. Something has got to be different. Everything is not just darkness. Everything should not just be darkness. Let's separate things to, let's, let's let some things be on one side, another thing be on the other side. When you say to yourself, you are calling your, the whole of yourself into being, say the whole of me, my, my intellect, my body, my, my spirit, my soul, let's have a meeting. Things have got to change. This is not the way we expect things to be. You understand? This is the time that you say enough is enough. This is your let there be, be, be light moment. They, that was mine. That was my let there, be, but let there be light day. How long does it take one to say let there be light? Just like that. God will have said let there be light and let there be something else and let there be another thing. Let there be something else and he will do everything and he will create, complete the creation in a day. But he decided not to do it. He decided to do these things one by one. Because he's teaching us, he's teaching us a lesson. We can't do everything all at once. But because the stage where we, where, we, where we are now, we didn't get there in one day. Some people will say Rome was not built in a day. Yes, Rome wasn't built in a day. But every single day, Rome was being built. Brick upon brick. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Strength upon strength. You understand? You are putting knowledge upon knowledge. You are learning some things and you are making use of them. Rome wasn't built in a day, but every day Rome was being built. Your first thing is to say, I have had enough. When we were studying, um, uh, what's called, this physics now, physics or even geography, they will tell us that light travels faster than sound. But I'll tell you, before light can come, sound has to happen. Before light, in this verse that I'm showing you, he said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Without him saying anything, nothing is going to happen. You have to say to yourself, enough is enough. I'm not living this way anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I can't be living in debt anymore. I've got to make more than I'm making right now. This is enough. Until you get to that point, things are not going to change. So let's say you have spoken, but what you are going to speak first, because when there is money problem, a lot of problem come, a lot of problem add themselves to it. What you need to do is to separate which one is money and which one is not. You, there has to be a, a there has to be a, a, a division between money problem and what's not money problem. When you're having, if you're having headache all the time, you are finding it difficult to sleep. Maybe it's just you, you're not eating right or you're not sleeping right or something like that. But somehow because there's money problem, who would think is money that cost it? Is this money that I'm thinking of that's giving me a headache? And is the headache that's making me not to sleep? Your wife looks at you in a certain way. You say, is it because I have no money? No, she's just tired and she just came in. See, it's, it's, it's not her problem. You need to be able to divide light from this. What is a money issue and what is not a money issue? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? This is day one. Day one, you've already said, let there be light. I have had enough. Now you need to start begin, you need to begin to see. Clarity is the beginning of control. You cannot have control of your, of your finances unless you can see what is happening. What do you see? You see chaos. What do you do about it? Do not panic. You understand? Don't panic. Let's, let's move on.
but you're going to plan because you need to decide what you want and you plan how to get that, how to, how to get there. Day number two. Day number two, and God said, let the vapor separate to form the sky above and, and oceans below. Now, day one, let there be light. We've got a separation between money problems and non-money non, non problems. Now, day two, you need to separate, there has to be a separation. Now, this, this is like you have a vapor, um, I mean, the earth, the earth was full of water and above the water you had vapor. So like nobody can see anything, nobody can do anything. You don't have dry ground, you have nothing to do down there. So what you need to do is to separate what you have. What God created the second day was to create the atmosphere, where I am now, where we are. We clouds up there and we have the, the seas below, below us. You understand? Below us, maybe under, under us, where I live, I live above sea level. So, so I can say we have the sea below us. But what am I bringing up from here? You've already separated money problem from non-money problem. What do you do next? Water above and water below. You need to separate what you own from what you owe. That is the second thing. What do you own? What do you owe? What I'm trying to say is clarity. Because sometimes people want to get out of debt and they just say, I just want to get out of debt. How, you do, how do you do it? You need to plan for it. It is the clarity. So second thing that you need to do is to separate what you own from what you owe. When you've, when you've done this, you get something we call the, your net worth. How much are you worth? This is your financial, your, your financial worth, not your worth as a human being, not your worth as a person, not your worth as a husband or a wife or a child. You understand? Not a, or your, worth, your worth as a son or a daughter. But this is just your financial your worth. Your net worth is what is left after you subtracted what you owe, i.e. all your liabilities, your credit cards, your loans, everything, the car loan, the mortgage, everything. When you've separated all the liabilities from the cash value of all that you own. Because if you are driving a car that, that still has HP on it or that still has some whatever, if you have a car loan, you understand? You put the value of the car as part of your, your the, the cash value of the car today, as part of your assets, and you put how much you, you owe on the car as part of your liability. Now you now take all your liabilities put together, you remove them from all your assets put together. Whatever you get is your net worth. For some people, believe me, the net worth is minus. You understand? There are some people that we see on the streets the homeless man has, doesn't have a net worth of anything. But believe me, his net worth is zero. He's owing no man nothing. But there are people that have a lot of things, but they owe a lot of things. So the net worth, you, have to, you actually say, I've, I've been working all this while. What do I actually own? What do I actually own? This is what you need to check. So you are separating the vapor above and the vapor below. What you owe from what you own. Let's move on to the next day. Day number three. God created dry ground and plants. I'll read this one out for you. And then God said, let the water beneath the sky be gathered into, into oceans so that the dry land will emerge. And so it was. Then God named the dry land earth and the water seas. Let the, let the earth burst forth. This is another thing. He said, let the earth burst forth with every sort of, every sort of grass and tree, uh, seed bearing plants and fruits trees with seeds inside the sea inside the fruits so that these seeds will produce the kind of plants and and fruits they came from what what am i getting at here there is a boundary that has been set here a brown boundary between the land and the sea the whole of the whole of the earth was full of water before but god now parts the or let me say the creator now packed the sea the waters to one side and he allowed dry dry land to appear on the other side what what do i want to get out from here we've already we've already divided what we what we call money problem from non-money problem we have we've, we've separated what we owe from what we own now what we need to do now is what, what's happening presently you should now be able to clearly calculate your income and your outgoings every single one of them for most people, the, 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 the sources where we have the income, they're not a lot. You understand? Maybe somebody is working here, there's another business here, there's a house there that, you, that you've rented out. Every single thing that's coming, in for, that's coming in to you, those are your sources of income. Well, let me, let me say one thing. For those who believe, don't, uh, I will say the creator. 
I will call God the creator. You have only one source. Like me, I will tell myself that I only have one source, and that is God. But I have lots of avenues. I usually pray that I usually pray that God will give me avenues of revenues. So many, so many. There are so many ways that we can make money to come in. But the thing is that if we don't manage what we have, the money can come in, but it will just go out the same way. You understand? We don't want to be saying hello to money and goodbye to it the next day. We want it to say hello. We want it to sit down. We want it to be there, even with us, for us to be able to direct it where it, where it needs to go. Money is a tool. Money is a tool. And we need to use it as such. So we've done three things now in three days. First thing, let there be light. We've separated money problem from non-money problem. Day two, we've separated what we owe from what we, from what we own. Day three, we, have not, we are now clearly calculating our income from our outgoings. Everything that is going out, every single thing, you need to calculate them. Even the ones that go out once in a year, you need to down. Because that's where I used, to, I used to stumble before. All those yearly or by, or by annual uh, payments. They used to throw me. I will wait. It's like somebody needs this one. I just put the money there. Somebody needs another thing. I put the money there. This outgoing for some of us that live here, maybe in, maybe in the in the UK, I, when I when I talk to people about about uh, having their spending plan, if you are from Africa or you are from the Caribbean, I will tell you to add one extra thing. I call it the black tax because what you earn is not only for you. There are people that will say, it's only you they're looking up to. Without you, they're going to die. And the phone call will come, you understand? So you need to put those money, you need to put them aside. If you still have parents, maybe you, you put them on, on, uh, on salary. You just say, every month I'll be, putting, I'll be giving these ones to you. And you let it go there. And that will be part of, part of your outgoings. We haven't gotten to the budget yet. But I just want to say, with your incomes and your, and your outgoes. Day number four, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I'll read that one again. And it says, and then God said, let bright lights appear in the skies to give the light to the earth and to identify the day and the night. They shall bring about the seasons of the earth and mark the days and years. Now, I, ju I jump and I'll, I'll, some things there and I'll move on to the next one. The large one, the sun, to preside over the day and the smaller and the smaller one, the, the moon, to preside through the night, and he also made the stars. So God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, what do this, this, according to this, when the sun rises in the morning and it sets in the evening, or by oh, there's a particular time that the sun is hottest, we say that is midday. So we've gone half of the day. The sun, this, the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun tells us that it, it tells us the revolution of what, what, whatever it is of the sun for a day. It says a day, a day has passed. The sun has risen and the one day has gone. The day and the night are one day. You understand? You put, we'll put them together like that. The sun and the moon, they actually tell us the times and the seasons. Because when the moon goes, does what it normally does every month. We said the, from the new moon to the full moon, you have like 28 days. The moon gives us the months. The sun gives us the dates. And the, the, we have four seasons in the year. Those seasons will tell you, once you have those four seasons, once they've gone around, you know you have one year. Now, what are these things telling us? There are things that we, we need. You need to have some, some, some goals in mind. Some will be short term. Some will be long term. You need to have time in mind where as, as far as your, as your finances are concerned. There are some things that will not wait for you. Like your retirement is not going to wait. You understand? Because soon, some, all, some people will be there very soon. Like me, I'll be there soon. You understand? But the thing is that there are things that need to be put in place before we get there. There are short-term are short -term goals that we need to do, that we, that we, need, to, that we need to set in place. Short-term goals, long-term goals. This one, I want to do it in five years' time. You start getting ready for it. There are some things that you need to do before you get to that point. The, the creation of the sun, the moon, and the stars, they tell you what, what are, about, about time and seasons. What about the moon? There is this, what about the, the stars? The stars, they, there is a star they call the northern star that, that um, sailors used for direction. Stars, the stars are used for direction. The sun, moon, and the sun, the sun and the moon, they're used for times and seasons. They're used for times and seasons. You understand? You have your direction, but you have the time that you need to get there. 
So all I'm trying to say in this point is that always keep your goals in mind. You have the, your, your northern star. This is my direction. This is what, this is what we said right from, from day one. When you said, let there be, when you brought the whole of yourself into, into, into to, to, come out, to come out, work on your finances. You've set that goal from that time. Let me, let me just ask one question. Just, just think of it now. If money were no object, what would you like to do right now? What would you like to be? What would you like to have? If money were no object, object you understand? Because when if you are in control of your money and you are in control of your time, you are actually in control. If nobody will tell you when to go and leave, if nobody has to tell you this is the time you've been, you've been and you cannot, you can't leave until I say so. You understand? Until you get to that point, until you, get, you are not yet in control. But the control is actually what we want. That's why I'm saying open, open your eyes. Check what is going on. Check what is coming in. Check your, check your net worth. And put some things in place. Set on some goals. Short terms, long terms. Set, set, set them and make sure you go for these goals. Because there's no point in setting goals that we're, not going to actually, that we're not going to actually achieve. Let me try and move quickly. Day number five. God created the birds and the sea creatures. Now, let me ask you something. If God had created the birds and the sea creatures in day number two, do you know there will be a problem? Because day number two, favor, favor, uh, vapor was still all, of, all over the earth. Vapor was still there. If these birds can fly, they will not be able to fly in mists or in vapor. Even if they can fly, where will they land? There, is, there are no trees. You understand? That's what I'm saying. All these things, they have to go step by step. Step by step, one step has to go after the other. Day number five, and says, let the water team with, with fish and other, other lives, and let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created the great sea animals and every sort of birds and every kind of bird, every sort of fish and every kind of bird, and God looked at them with pleasure and blessed them all. What did he say to them? He said, multiply and, and stop the, the oceans. He told them, he told them, and, and to the birds, he said, let your numbers increase, fill the earth. When God does anything, or whatever the creator does, whatever you want to do in your life, you want increase. That's actually what you want. But if you don't plan for the increase, it's not going to come. If these birds have come in day two of creation, all of them will have died. The, the, the fish, they, they, they will survive because the, the, the earth was full of, uh, was full of water. They will, but the birds will die. What am I, what am I getting at here? This is how things are, have got to be. You've got to plan. There's, there has to be planning. There's got to be preparation. These trees that we had the, the, the um, day before, day four, the trees that came out in day four, they actually, or, or in day three, they actually are in preparation for the birds to come, for them to come and land, for them to come and nest, for them to come and, to build their nest. You understand? If those ones were not there, these birds would, they, they would, and what is it that God is telling every, every creature? He will tell them to increase. You need to be thinking increase every time. You don't just stay in the same place and be comfortable there. Like I said before, whatever you cannot, whatever you, well, you, you cannot change whatever you can tolerate. If you can tolerate something, you can never change it. Let me move on quickly. Day six, land, land animals and humans were created on day six. There's a lot of reading here and I, I, want, I want to run I want to run, and um, let me just read a bit of this one. It just said, let the earth bring forth every, every kind of animals, cattle and reptiles and, and wildlife of every kind. And so it was. And God made all sorts of wild animals and cattle and reptiles. And it was with what, with what he had done. Now, let's talk about these cattle and let's talk about human beings too. We human beings, we take in oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. But all those trees, they take in carbon dioxide, they give out oxygen. What if they were not here? We've got no, no oxygen to deal with. God prepared all these things, or the Creator prepared all these things before, before man came. Now, He now said, Let us make man. Now, while he, while he said that, this is where I wrote 26 there, He said, Let us make man, someone like ourselves, to be the master of everything. You are supposed to be Lord of everything that God has created. So God, so God created man. And let me just, let me just, I'm trying to move quickly. So what is the duty of man in creation? Man is supposed to be in charge of everything that God has created. We are supposed to rule, to reign, to subdue, to dominate every other thing that God created. Why is that? Those things, those things are supposed to rule, they rule, they control. 
it includes our money and our time. If you are not in control of your money and your time, you are still not in control yet. You understand what, what I'm trying to say? Money is supposed to be a tool that we use. It's supposed to be a master that answers to us. But when money becomes a master, if when money takes on the role of a master, we have a problem. And that's what, that's what, we, that's what, I'm, trying to, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand here, that having clarity in our financial situation will help us to get, get control again. I know you say, I'm not, you know, I, I, I didn't preach. I just spoke, I just use this thing to explain clarity and control. Now, we've get, we, we now get to day seven. I said the creator rested. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and rested on the seventh day from all the work that he has done. God rested. Why did God rest? Was it because he was, he was tired? No, he wasn't tired. But because he had finished everything he wanted to do. This is planning. He planned everything. He has completed what he wanted to do. You understand? There are some stages we will get to in our, in our, in our, in our, on the way to, our, to financial freedom that you just need to rest. You just need to, you just need to keep, take things cool. You don't have to struggle. You've already put everything in place. You just need to relax. All right. There are three phases to money. That when, when I speak to my clients, these are the things I usually tell them. Three phases to money. The first phase is the survive, you have survival money. That's the survival phase. The second phase is smart money. The third phase is what I call sweet money. And I love the sweet part of the money. I love that part. Now, survival money, you don't use money for survival to use it as if you are using sweet money. You understand? Survival money is to, is to keep you healthy, to keep you sane, to keep you well. This is the part where we get something we call the emergency fund. This is the part where we have insurance. This is the part where we actually need to write your will. You understand? You're, it's not the survivor just for you. It's survivor for you and anyone that's your dependent. Survivor money. Let me, let me talk about football a, a little bit. I love football. I actually, I support Arsenal. All right? For those who don't... Who don't <laughs> I just want to throw that one out there. I support Arsenal. Um... You have, in a, in a football team, you have defenders, you have midfielders, and you have your, your outfield players, your, your, the offense. Now, your defenders is like, survivor money is like your defenders. The smart money is like your midfield, and your sweet money is like right in front there. If you can defend properly, your midfield will have, will have not too much job to do. They know what they're supposed to do. And then they can pass the ball to the people in front who are going to, your survival money is just to make sure that when something happens, you don't, you don't crumble. You have your emergency fund. You don't want, you, you've stopped borrowing. You don't want to start borrowing when something happens. Your tire busts. You should be able to get something. Just go to your, to your emergency fund, get some money and do it because that is an emergency. Now, the person that's going to get married, that decided that they're going to get married next month or because they, they found each other last month and they want to get married next month and they say you have to be there, you need to buy the ashwab, that is not an emergency. That is their emergency, not yours. They've decided not to plan properly. properly. Your, their non-planning is not, is, not, is, not is, not, is not your business, you understand? So you don't use emergency money for that. You use emergency money for when something, when, let's say there's a loss of a job. Like when the coronavirus uh, thing came when, and, and countries went on to lockdown, there were some people that did not have any income at all during that period. During that period, your emergency fund will, will kick in. Your emergency fund will kick in at that, part, at that particular time. So these are, the, these are the things that we need to do. There are three phases of money. I'm running out of time, so I just want to run through some things. When I, when I talk to my clients about how to plan their finances, these are things that I use. I use my... Uh, uh, Financial milestones, milestones, the little, little things that you need to do on the way to you being, to you becoming, to you becoming uh, financially free. All right, let me start. There is order in personal finance. It's just, it's not anyhow order. The, it is the right order. If you can follow that order, you will get to the, you get to the end. But the thing is that if you don't have a goal in mind, there's nothing for you to hit. You understand? If you have no goal. You can just play your ball in anywhere, anywhere. But if you have a goal in mind, this is what I, this is what I'm aiming for. That's why I say, what do you want? At the very beginning, what do you see? We saw chaos. What should you do? Don't panic. 
what do you want? You will have to decide. You understand? And how do you get what you want? Your plan. This is the planning. Just like as in, crea as in creation, each new step that you take in finances has, must build on the previous step. Because you've done something before, just build on it. I'll just run through this one quickly. Number one milestone, you need to create a, a spending plan. Some people call it a budget. I know most of the time when I call it budget, people become, <laughs> the, the, the budget is like, a, is like a taboo to some people. It, it's, like you're, it's like you're telling your body wants to diet and the body will freeze. I don't want you to freeze. I call it spending plan. You need to have a proper budget and you need to let everything that is going out. When, you have a, when, you, when you've seen what was going out, you know, when, when, when we check our income and our outgoing, that's when you will see some things that are not supposed to be going out at all. The things that are wastage and we don't want wastage and your budget will tell you your budget will help you that what comes in does not what comes in and what go and what go are what are what's going out they're on the same level your income most of the time maybe it will be it, it should be more than your outgo if your outgo should exceed your upkeep will become your downfall that's that's what the accountants normally say. So your first your first one is to create a spending plan. Now the second one, this is where I normally get this is where people normally go against what I say. I said save one thousand pounds. I live in England, okay. So I will I will use the pounds. If you live in the US, you say I'll say save one thousand one thousand dollars for your emergencies. That's the first stage of your your emergency. All this all this part we're still in the survival mode. We're still in the survival phase of money. Okay, this is just to catch you if something happens. One thousand. What I was I was talking to someone, uh, I think a few days ago in Nigeria. I said, so if somebody wants to get emergency fund in Nigeria, how, how many how many are the guy? The guy told me twenty thousand will be enough. But if you want to cre create more, fifty thousand. So I really don't know. I would say save twenty thousand and leave that thing there. Not something that you use for anything. It's not for HRD or whatever. It's for the survival of your family. It's for your survivor, for you to be able to survive whatever whatever comes in. Something is not everything that your emergency fund is going to catch, but part part of your survival is for you to have proper insurance, your life insurance, your car insurance, your home insurance, content insurance. All those ones they need to be there. If without those ones being there, and you are going to invest in the stock market, you are using survival money as if it were smart money. You understand? We will get to that point. Because when 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 you when your survivor money is is in shape, is 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 set, you understand. Anything that is left over is what we call the smart money. That's when you can now tell the money, okay, I want, I want to invest here. I want to save this one to be able to pay down payment for that house, so we can we can rent it out and stuff like that. Your what what you use your money for in the smart phase? That's what's going to provide money for you in in the sweet phase. That's when you can now start, you can go and buy your Lamborghini at that point because you are, you are using sweet money. But when you still have debt, you still, you are still carrying credit cards around and you want to go and buy your Ferrari or, or Lamborghini, you are just, you are jumping the gun. Financial finance has to do with order and it has to be in the right order. Let me move on, let me move on to milestone number three. Milestone three, you need to pay off all your credit cards. The reason why I put it first because this one you can you can put as much money into it as you as you as you as you have. You understand? If you want to do the same for a loan, they will say you need to pay the whole loan at, at the same time. But with credit cards, you need to first of all tell yourself you stop using cards and then pay them off. This is milestone number three. Once you turn this you, you turn this uh, corner, you know things things will be getting better and better. There are lots of things I could say about each each of the milestones, but I just want us to run through them so you can you can know i'm just trying to give you clarity so you can have control in your finances now master number four is to increase your emergency fund to one month's living expenses one month of living expenses there are some there are some non there are some non um discretion expenses that needs to go out either you get zero income on or, or or you get a million a million pound income those things they still have to go out your food, shelter, clothing, transportation, your gas, your electricity, your water bills, all those ones, they, they will always go out. We, we have something we call the council tax here. The, it still needs to go out. Either you have money coming in or not. Those are your non-discretionary ones. So you need to put those ones. How much of those ones are you using every month? You need to increase your emergency fund from 1,000 pounds to one month's living expenses or 
from 20 from 20,000 uh, naira to one month living expenses whatever it is or from 1000 uh, do dollars let me move on to the next one after you've you've raised your emergency fund to that to that point now you now need to pay off all your other consumer consumer debts everything you've already because you've already got rid of your credit cards you've increased your emergency fund to one month living expenses now pay off all your consumer debt those ones need to go once this this milestone number five is reached once you get to the end of this milestone number five things will change because right now you're not oh you're not owing anybody anything anymore you are now free to do what you, what you really want to do you understand all those things that you've planned all those things that you said right at the beginning all those things that you said if money were no objects what do i want this is the time that you now start using your money for but you need to use them smart smartly this is not the time to buy your lamborghini it's not your time this is the time to actually now this is the time to actually start doing something and the first thing you need to do is to increase that your emergency fund to three months living expenses that in 90 days or even 100 days, if something happens today, you lose your job, you lose all your income or whatever, you still have something to keep you for the next, nobody will start knocking on your door at this point. You understand? Because you are, you are not owing anybody anything. So you have enough to be able to raise your emergency fund to three months living expenses. Milestone number seven. Milestone number seven is where you pay off your mortgage. Because you are not owing anybody anymore, this is the only thing that you have left. And you may have some other major ex expenses. You may decide you want to change your car this time. You'll be able to save for it because you are not you are no longer owing anybody any money. You understand? You are not owing anybody anything. So all you have, all your extra money, you are now using it for yourself. You can use it to pay off your debt. You can use it to act, uh, to pay off your mortgage. I mean, you can use it to buy some new things. Some people at this point, this is where they buy businesses. Some people while they, while while they've been paying off things. You get yourself, you get yourself loaded with lots of knowledge. You learn about stock markets. You learn about the real about real estate. You learn about buying businesses or building businesses. At this point, you now have the money to be able to do it. You understand what, what I'm trying to say? Now you invest now, even though I'm putting investing for retirement at this point. You you are at this point, you are investing heavily into your retirement at this point. Something that you've not been doing before. In England, they have this thing they call workplace. Uh, work pension scheme in the uk they have work workplace scheme, pension scheme when they found out that nobody was saving so it's like it was almost like forcing people to actually save those ones they need to be going on if you have something like that in your in your place of work do it because your employers will add to it maybe the government will even add to it you understand so when you if you have these schemes like this don't let them go but at this point at this milestone this milestone number eight you will you will actually pump a lot of money into it, into retirement. That when that time comes, you will not be like people who work 40 hours a week for 40 years, and then after 40 years, they're now get they're now getting only 40 percent of what they get of what they used to get before. After at retirement, your your standard of living doesn't have to go down. Of living could stay the same, and for some people, they just increase the standard of living. They've they've bought a lot of a lot of properties before. Just sell one and go on holidays if you if you if you want to. You understand what I'm trying to say? At this point, you put into your into your into your into your retirement. I say milestone number number nine. You children about money, because you don't want them to feel what you felt right at the beginning of your life. I don't want I don't want to I don't want my children to be in the state where. I, where, where I was on the day I said let there be light the state the place where I was on Wednesday the 10th of January 2001 I don't want my children to be at that point like I told you before I was there I was married I had three children I had no savings I had two uh, two loans I had four credit cards it was that was a, a sorry a sorry state as if I can look back now I don't want my children to be in that particular state so right now I'm teaching them how to deal with money how to be in charge of their money then their money will not be in charge of them how to use money as a tool you understand and the final one i would just say once once you finish that part you've done that part you can even teach a lot of people about this you attain your financial freedom without you working money that comes into you should be able to should be able to help you should be able to do uh how do i say now cover your expenses without you having to work these are the 10 milestones that I normally use. Each one of them, I could explain them a lot, but my time is almost gone. But before I go, let me just quickly show you some things. I told you I've written a few books before. Um, this, this is my first book, Milestones of Financial Freedom. This was the first one I wrote uh, some, some years ago. 
all this all these milestones are in this this particular book and the next uh um, the book I wrote is the price of financial freedom. If you are going to get into those milestones, there are some prices. There are some prices that you're going to be, you're going to pay. Your 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 thoughts is going to your thoughts are going to change. Your words are going to change. The things you are doing, they have to change. You don't you don't waste time like it used to be before. The next one that I wrote on finance is called financial legacy. These are eight lessons my father taught me about money. I didn't know there were lessons in those days, but now I know, and I was able to put all of them. In, into a book to help. Uh, right now, I have my, my, my latest book is, which was released last, last month, is called Joshua Jordan and Jericho. This is not a strictly financial book, but this is it's a, it's a book on growth. If you want to succeed, there are lots of obstacles that you have. That you, you understand? Lots of ob obstacles. But you don't want those obstacles to stop you. You want to be able to climb over your obstacles because some people once they see once they see so any obstacle can become a tombstone for people they just lie down under it say because of this one i'm not moving forward anymore but you want those obstacles to actually become your stepping stones step on them and move over that's that's what this book is about it's called joshua jordan and jericho reaching beyond all all obstacles to your destiny what has what i said they're just four little things there are 10 chapters in it but I'll, I'm bringing four out of it. One, one of them is get up, let go of the, of the past. Don't let your disappointments, don't let them keep you where you are. Move forward, get up, get set, prepare for the future. Preparation, if you want to become financially free, that's what, I, that's what I've we've been talking you prepare god prepared the ground for the animals he prepared for he prepared the trees for the, for the birds before he created them prepare for your future then you step out into a new day because things of the past you've forgotten about them step out because you can prepare and over prepare and if you don't actually step out to do what you're supposed to do you won't gain anything you won't gain anything so the last one is to match into your destiny anyway i don't want to take your time all my books are available on amazon or Barnes and Nobles. If you just if you just type me at the ocean, you'll be able to catch all the books. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I know my next thing says uh, questions, but we'll have questions and answers later. Thank you, John. Over to you. Uh, thanks very much, Annie, for that presentation. I, I know I think maybe we should have given you the whole session because I know you had to rush through so much you had to do uh, to deliver within the short of 40 minutes. Um, we're going to have some Q&A sessions later on, but um, let, let's welcome in uh, William um, to give a second uh, session of this uh, topic. Uh, William, feel free to introduce yourself. I think I know William for a couple of years now. Uh, he's, uh, he's a very he's a top consultant in Euro finances. He used to be a partner in uh, uh, London and Capital, they are into an asset management and he which was a partner, so he's very much at the top of his game. So, William, uh, over to you. Thank you. Well, first of all, Ni, that was phenomenal. That was absolutely brilliant. Loved Thank it. You. So helpful. And, um, you know, very practical. And um, we'd all be well advised to get some of those books and uh, or, or try and listen to you again. So that was great. I can see you've got a few friends here. I've got Selwind. Nice to see you, Selwyn, in your garden. Um, my name is William. Uh, I'm a member of King's Church uh, in London. I'm one of the elders and, and um, a trustee there. I'm a self-employed, effectively, I'm a, I'm a company director. Um, I, I, I get involved in a whole bunch of different things. Um, the most exciting thing I'm doing at the moment, I think, is we are setting up a... Uh, a social enterprise in Zimbabwe uh, to provide people in Zimbabwe with an opportunity to save and actually protect their savings and not have them all taken away by inflation, which is currently running. I think it's, this month it's a little bit better, but last month it was something like 800%. Um, so there are very few options and we're trying to create, you know, make a difference so that people can, uh, can, can save and taken away from them. Uh, I'd asked um, John if we could do a little bit of a, a poll, but I'm not sure it's going to work. So um, if it's not going to work on the system, then I'm just going to ask you uh, to have a think about um, what kind of money personality you are. Um, and uh, there's, there's lots of these things. If you, if you go Google money personality, you'll see there are lots of different versions of the same thing. But the one that I had was, are you an investor, a saver, a big spender 
a debtor, or a shopper. So which of the following five money personalities are you most like? An investor, a saver, a big spender, a debtor, or a shopper? Um, what's e interesting, I mean, it would have been nice to see what the, what the dispersion is in this group of people. But what's interesting about that is that we're all relating to the same thing and yet we all relate to it differently. Um, and, um, you know, money, uh, understanding how we relate to money, uh, to its influence over us, where that comes from, is part of the, what is a key to bringing it under control, which is a wonderful word, Nii, uh, and setting yourself up for financial success. So in this session, we're going to be looking in a minute, in a few minutes, at five principles that are going to help you get money under your control rather than you be under it. I tell you that one of the key things about, before we get into anything really about money, is to understand that your past need not, need not define you. Um, I, my own personal experience is that, that's a great answer, Zeno, thank you. Um, my own personal experience is that um, I was brought up by Salvation Army officers. And if you know anything about uh, people who work for the Salvation Army, they don't do it for the money. Um, so we, we had a very modest lifestyle and um, uh, I you know, struggled to learn how to handle money. And as a consequence, there was a time in my life where um, we had to make an arrangement with our creditors and you know, basically go bankrupt, um, which is a very, very uh, sobering experience. Uh, and I realized at that point that uh, you either come out of that stronger or you come out of that weaker. You either get defined by it or you use it from which to move forward. Uh, in my case, I decided that God was bigger than my history and um, I moved on from there. Uh, and um, my last immediate job prior to this was advising a, um, an ultra wealthy family on how to manage their investments, which I think is quite funny. You can start with uh, living in, in homeless hostels because your parents are running them to advising multi, uh, multi billionaire families. Um, so I, I'm going to put a presentation up and we're just going to work our way through that. Uh, if I can remember how to do that. Here we go. So uh, without any prior uh, arrangement uh, between me and myself, uh, I also came up with a title very similar to his. Mine is called Foundations for Financial Freedom. Um, and uh, I put a comment there, which is it's simple, it's just not easy. Um, it's simple, but it's just not easy. Uh, how do I move the slide forward? Does anybody know how to do it? What if I do that? No, that didn't work. I, hmm. I'm wondering whether anybody can help me with me. Hey, do you know how to, how to move the slides forward or is that? Uh, uh, it's a space bar. A bigger bar. Remote control. No. Okay. Um, uh, right. So when it comes to money, um, I don't know how that moved, but it moved. Thank you very much, whoever helped me, <laughs> unless it was me. Uh, when it comes to, uh, to money, um, we have this sort of Houston, we have a problem uh, situation. Uh, the reality is that the principles behind successfully managing money are well understood and they're not complicated. But the evidence is that very few people manage their money and a lot of people manage it very badly. So if you're in that position, you're in plenty of company. Um, now, if the consequences were mild, it wouldn't be so much of an issue, but they really are, are not mild. Uh, in the UK today, we have 13 million UK households that have either got no savings at all or less than £1,500 in savings. We're talking about people who will have to retire on these savings. We're, we're, these are, we have nearly 13 households with virtually no money uh, for whom a boiler breakdown would be a major financial crisis. Um, total unsecured debt per UK adult, and bear in mind this is an average, um, 
there are people like me who have no debt whatsoever, but the average uh, total unsecured debt per UK adult is £4,264. Uh, and including uh, mortgages, the total debt per adult in the UK is 112% of annual income. Um, there is generally very poor retirement provision, as Nia said, in the UK, we've had to move to a system where people have to choose to opt out of savings for pensions, because that's the only way we could get people to start saving. So you, the default is you, you are enrolled into pensions, um, but that's a recent development. And up till then, really, there's very little by way of personal, private retirement provision. There are high levels of financial stress. There's a lot of unmanageable debt. 318 people a day in the UK were declared insolvent or bankrupt in the last quarter of 2019, which is the most recently available data. It's 318 people a day. Uh, and in Q4 2019, lenders wrote off in total 1.46 billion pounds of debt. That's about 5 million pounds a day of debt that they were never going to get back. Hence, why credit card interest rates average in the UK just under 21 because anybody else who's got a credit card has to pay for those defaults. Um, debt contributes to family stress and breakdown. 14 properties a day were repossessed uh, in the last quarter of uh, 2019. 223 landlord possession orders a day were, were given in the same period of time. And this is before COVID. This is before we had the crisis that we go through at the moment. All this comes with very, very high costs indeed in terms of physical and mental health. Against all of that, I'm here to say that it's possible to be financially successful. It is simple, but it's not particularly easy. Uh, and the simple bit is what we're gonna be discussing next. Uh, so, beg your pardon. I think that's, oh, there we go. I found this, uh, this, um, this post Maholic, which is all about becoming financially, um, physically fitter. And it turns out it's actually the perfect recipe for financial fitness as well. It's simple, but it's not easy. Start small, have a plan, work hard and stay consistent. Um, one thing I learned in business was that it's easy to overestimate what you can get done in one year and it's easy to underestimate what you can get done in five. If you decide to stick at something and get there, you will be, uh, you'll be surprised how much you can achieve by just consistently sticking at something. I think it's important to say that you don't get to be financially secure by having tons of money. That's not usually the way it starts. The way it starts is it starts with the money that you have, you know, the things that you have in your hand. Um, and What's really interesting is that with maybe three or four exceptions out of the 7 billion people that live on earth, no one has enough money. Uh, there was a recent uh, survey by uh, Cap Gemini and Merrill Lynch, a piece of research among um, very high net worth individual clients uh, with average um, investments in excess, just investments, let alone other assets in excess of $5 million. And they asked these families um, how much money would they need to be financially secure? And the answer invariably was about twice as much as they had. So even the wealthy don't think they have enough money. No one has enough money. You don't get to be financially secure by having enough money. You get to be financially secure by controlling the money that you have. Um, I think Nay said it much better than I would, but I think it's worth remembering that money is a terrible, lying Hello? master you know money uh, you? Hello? Lying master um, what, I'm it does not do what it says it will but it can be a very powerful servant um finally two little points i was going to drop in one is that you should remember that lifestyle is a choice that you make it's not something that you have to live up to or something that other people impose on you lifestyle is a choice that you make and working towards accumulating money, I think it's, it's always worth holding this in your, in your mind. Accumulating money is a means to an end and not an end. 
you should have something much better to do with money than just count it. So if you get the basics right, you start small and develop each area as you go, you're gonna to get to where you need to be. So I'm gonna just go through the five, if I can, hang on. Keep forgetting that I've got slides here, I need to move them, hang on. Yes, there we go. Why is managing money not easy? Well, you, some of you will have seen various versions of this uh, iceberg uh, theory that basically says that the behaviors of what you see on the surface are driven by things that are below the surface and that the further down they are, the, least, the less aware you are of them. So you behave, how you behave with money is a function of what you believe about money. To change your behavior, you're gonna to have to face up to and deal with your unconscious beliefs. The good news is you can change them. Uh, the good news is you can change them. So if you think that money is a scarce resource and that if you had some, it means that somebody else has to have less, you can change that perception. You can actually, uh, the way to, to um, be successful in business, I believe, is to deliver value, is to get, deliver more value than you're charging for your services. I think it's, it's absolutely possible um, that, um, you know, that you don't need to live with a scarcity mentality when it comes to money. Um, but the challenge is identifying what are the beliefs that are keeping you uh, behaving the way you are now, changing them because, um, you know, they said the definition of lunacy is thinking that you can change things without, um, by continuing to do the same things you were before. So um, that's kind of a, a small principle. I loved, I don't know whether you're old enough to remember there, there was a, uh, an old advert from Pirelli, the tire uh, manufacturing firm, that used to say, power is nothing without control. Oh, yes. I thought yes. it was a brilliant quote. Absolutely brilliant quote. Power is nothing without control. And they were showing, if I remember, the original poster had a, a tremendously powerful athlete uh, waiting on a starting line, wearing a pair of stiletto heels. And uh, I think the point that we're making is, you're not gonna be able to use all the power that that athlete has if you're gonna try and run in stilettos. Um, so that was all about how important their tires were. I think money, the yeah, same applies to money. Ma money is extremely powerful, but money is nothing without control. So I'm just gonna cover a lot of it. I don't think that, you know, I think some of the areas I'm gonna cover will be uh, very similar to what Need talked to us through. Uh, I'm gonna say there's five things that are going to get you in control. Number one is uh, the five step plan is to live on a budget. Um, I know that, uh, thank you, Nia, I think you're quite right. I think I may change my language when I talk about this in future. I know that budget is seen to be a very boring and difficult word. And I often wonder why it's hard for people to draw up a budget. And I think the reason is that Living with a budget means that you have to make decisions beforehand about how you're going to allocate money. Yes. Um, so I, I love spontaneity and I like to be able to just go and do things that I like. But when it comes to money, that does not work. Uh, most of the money that you're going to have is accounted for long before you've received it. So I, I tend to work on the principle that you should think about the 80-10-10 rule. You live on 80%, you give away 10%, and you save 10%. And if you're going to explore that a little bit more, out of the 80, 50% um, uh, of that will cover needs, and the other 30% that you're left over with uh, should cover things that are wants. Um, the needs, many of them you're just not going to have much choice about. You're going to have to pay for taxes. You're going to have to live somewhere. You're going to have to buy some food. All those things are essential. There are some bills that in there that you can be wise about, you know, think about your utilities, do the comparison websites, shop around for car insurance. In the old days, I used to get loyalty from insurance companies. I used to work for one. Uh, so I know the way it used to be. These days you don't. So uh, if your car insurance comes up for renewal and you're not smart enough to go shopping around, don't at all be surprised if the premium jumps up by 20% because that's the kind of thing that, that happens. Um, when it comes to your budget, not everything gets paid monthly. Um, you know, you have, uh, uh, I think, uh, the council tax is 10 months out of every 12. Yeah. Um, 
the, your car insurance might be just a single payment. Mine has just come up for renewal just now. Um, so have a sinking fund. Work out what you need to pay out every month and then work out how much every month you need to set aside for those bills that you know are definitely going to be coming. You know, if you, uh, uh, if you, if you, and I would advise you to pay as many of those things in a single lump sum as you can. You generally save money by being able to pay for things all at once when they come up rather than have to defer them and pay interest uh, on that deferral. Uh, and certainly try and avoid having to go to the bank and borrow or go into overdraft or, or pay for the bills out of a credit card that's gonna, that's gonna charge you 21% for the privilege of, of using that money. Don't forget to build in some fun into your budget. You know, uh, you can't live an austere lifestyle for the rest of your life, <laughs> waiting for things to get right. Uh, allow uh, for some, some, some fun in your budget, you know, things like Netflix, maybe that's fine. But beware, anything that comes with a subscription, you've got to keep your eye on. Because what they would like you to do is to forget all about it and just keep paying that money out indefinitely. And before you know it, you've got seven pounds going out here, 10 pounds going out there. And before, before you know it, it starts to build up. So beware of subscriptions. Once you've got your budget um, and you've made those decisions about where you're going to be prioritize your money and where it's going to go, use the budget as the building block for your financial plan. Actually think, see if you can extend your, your because you, you now know how much you're going to be spending out. Think out five years. What will life you know, look like in five years time? What will you be needing how old will your kids be? Will they be in education? Try and anticipate some of these challenges that are coming down the road and start building them into a plan. That plan would include things like life insurance to protect your dependents, as Nee properly said. I have a, you know, a particular view about life insurance. You should buy the cheapest life insurance you can, uh, make it term insurance, and don't try and mix up savings and in, don't try and mix up uh, insurance and savings in the same policy. That seldom turns out to be good value for money. You should try and keep the two separately. Have a will. Make sure if you, if you were going to go out for the evening and leave your kids in the hands of a babysitter, you would leave a note for that baby what kind of things they need in terms of food or what time they, they'll need to wake up or whatever. If you would do that for, your for going out for a meal with your wife, with your babysitter, for, for a babysitter for an evening, you should definitely prepare in the event that your, your life ends too soon and uh, the people that are dependent on you uh, need to have a clear plan for what's going to go ahead. It's your responsibility. You're, the, you're, you're responsible for that. Nobody else will do it for you if you don't. Have a will. Um, uh, have five-year goals, and I, I won't go over again that stuff, but things like holidays, emergencies, uh, funding a car, ideally you want to try and be able to pay for those things uh, and a long-term plan will get you in a position to do that. Then the next question is, okay, once you've controlled your expenses within the budget and you've got a plan, uh, is there a way to increase your income? And you should definitely consider that. Are, are there things that you can do? Uh, I was reading this morning in my daily reading, Proverbs 22, 29, uh, where it says, do you see someone say work they will serve before kings and not serve before officials of low rank. In other words, if you can make yourself skillful, you can invest in yourself, train yourself, read, uh, develop skills, you will actually uh, enhance your career prospects. And again, over a five year period, you can actually see your career developing um, more strongly uh, because you bring uh, up to date skills to your, to, your, to your work. Take yourself seriously. So that's, Point number one, live on a budget, have a financial plan. Two, avoid debt. And when I say avoid, I mean like the plague. You know, try not to uh, take on any debt uh, that you don't need. So first of all, get serious about getting rid of any toxic debt. If you've got any high interest, any credit card debt, you just need to get rid of it. You know that UK average credit card debt per household in the UK is 2,595 pounds at an average interest of rate of 20.77%. That means the average household is paying 540 pounds a year in interest on debt. That they, so that's, that's adding to the cost of whatever they spent that money on the first time. They're now paying interest on having bought whatever they bought. 
uh, that's, you know, that's money you can put to far better use. Um, so think about uh, debt. I would, there's a whole bunch of stuff I would completely avoid and not touch at all ever. Um, I have a credit card, but I only got, I only have one and I run it to a zero balance. So if I can't afford to pay the bill at the end of the month, I do not buy anything on the credit card. That's, that's, that's me. Some people would say, try and live with zero credit cards, have none at all. And I wouldn't disagree. Avoid um, what they call whole of life insurance. That is insurance combined with savings. Um, I would uh, avoid uh, timeshares. Uh, I would avoid car leases. There's a whole bunch of stuff that make other people wealthy off your back. They're basically capturing your labor going forward for years in order to live very well. And it works great for them, but it doesn't work great for you. Um, and I would try and avoid all those things. Uh, some of you will have heard of a debt snowball. I would think, you know, if you've got m multiple debts, what you do is you, you pay the minimum on most of the debt and you concentrate all the available money on paying off the highest interest debt first. As soon as you've paid that off, you then add the, the, mon the monthly payment of that onto the next one and you just work your way through and clear all your debts um, uh, that way. I think that's a, that's a great idea and a way that can actually get you position that you're not the slave of, you know, the, the Bible says the borrower is the slave of the lender. You know, you, you kind of want to avoid being in that position. Now, I would say that mortgages are different. I would not count mortgage as a debt in the conventional sense, because this is money that's allowing you to buy an asset. And that asset is, um, it's not, well, it may not be income producing if you're living in it, but if you weren't living in it, you'd have to be renting somewhere else and you'd be paying even more to live there. So that you are buying an asset and on the balance sheet that comes on the credit side. So um, usually my experience is that a mortgage means that you can be live in a house for less cost than it would actually cost you to rent it. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. But whenever you are leveraging yourself up in that way, you've got to be, pardon me, you've got to be careful that you don't overdo it. And also you need to realize that when you buy an asset like a house, you also need to have money in your budget to maintain it and to keep it to the right standard. So here we are, point number two then, avoid debt. And, and I would say if you're working your way out of trouble, uh, living on a budget comes first and then as allocating as much money as you can to get rid of debt and focusing on that for a year or two until you get yourself clear is the is the priority number three i would say foster high quality friendships you become like the people that you you make friends with um uh, so you need to focus there, there's a story of benjamin franklin i was reading benjamin franklin's financial principles and uh he was talk, telling the story when he was starting his career he ended up as a very wealthy man and dedicated his life to, um, to developing the political process in the US. Whether he'd be happy about the way it's ended up now or not is another matter, but we're not gonna go there. Um, when he was very early in his career as a printer, which is where he made his money, he came to London to learn his trade. And he met and uh, made friends with a man called James Ralph, uh, who's another American here, who was a bit of a dreamer. He was trying to become an actor, then he wanted to become a journalist. He wasn't really getting anywhere but he was managing to live by borrowing money from Benjamin Franklin. And um, all the time that Benjamin Franklin had a friendship with him, his reserves were going down. <laughs> he was basically keeping two people alive and he never ever got the, the money back from his friend. The valuable lesson he took out of that is that from then on, he focused on um, finding, uh, seeking out people that shared his values and, and help them through their help, um, strengthen his own position. I would say you need to find people that share your values. Uh, but ad additional to that, there are other ways in which you can learn from wise people. I mean, YouTube has got some tremendous people. There's a guy called Dave Ramsey, he's an American, you have to allow for uh, the differences, the cultural differences, but the guy's got great wisdom. Um, there's, uh, and there are a huge number of books uh, available 
uh, and uh, most of them are absolutely terrific and thoroughly uh, recommended. And all of those will help you if you filter them through your own personal experience. So, you know, take in good stuff and good stuff will come out. So foster high quality friendships, I would say. And then number four, save and invest. Uh, now, many people in this, on this call are very well experienced in the area of financial services and know a lot about this. Uh, and yet, you know, we can be like the, um, you know, the barbers, you know, the barber it makes everyone's hair fantastic and his own hair is a mess. You know, so many of us who work in financial services are not particularly good at this stuff, surprisingly enough. Um, so totally uh, underscore what Nye said about an emergency fund. Absolutely, you must have that. You need margin in your life. Emergencies happen and you may not know where they're coming from, but they certainly will. And you need some money to set aside for that. Um, pick up any free money you can. You know, if your employer is offering to match your pension contributions, take it. It's the best return you ever make. Absolutely, you should be taking that. Um, if your employer has a match savings program, take it. Um, within that, I would also say, use whatever the government allows you to. So the government provides I, um, ISAs, which means that any money you've already paid tax on, you can save and not have to continue to pay tax on that money. Um, once it uh, matures, once it grows and matures. Um, look for low, low cost money trackers, unless you wanna make a hobby of investing and being, having your eyes on the market, which by the way, is not really for hobbyists, it's for people who've got the time to be full time on it. Uh, I would say there are a lot of very skilled people who can provide you very good investment uh, uh, vehicles at very low cost. And the, what you, one of the few things you can try and control is the cost. And we are, we are, I don't think there's ever been a better time to access investment markets in terms of the options and the, the value for money you get. On the saving and investing thing, I would say be aware there's a lot of people who want to waste your time and your money on get rich quick schemes. Um, they generally don't work. So, um, Avoid the lottery. Uh, you know, you may be the guy who's going to start start a tech startup business in your garage and make an absolute become a billionaire. But the fact that we know the names of all the people who've ever done that shows you how rare that uh, that event actually is. Um, and I would say you you will waste a lot of good time uh, pursuing wild dreams while you should be getting on with the diligent business of building up your financial position and looking after your family. And the last part of my five-step plan is be generous, learn to be generous. Um, again, some employers have match giving programs. Um, uh, you, if you can do that, do, a, do look for those. But either way, budget money out of your uh, money every month uh, to be uh, generous, uh, do it in a way that's thoughtful, uh, regular regular and purposeful i think giving money away well is remarkably hard knowing is you know it's easy to write to cancer research it's much harder to find ways to be thoughtful and really make an impact with the money you have available to give away i've started a charity with my family we are trying to be diligent about giving money away in a, in a thoughtful way and i would say it's, it's actually harder to give money away than to make it in a funny kind of way. Um, I think generosity is, is a, one of the most attractive qualities of human, of human beings. Uh, and I think uh, being generous connects you to the real world. Uh, many of you have firsthand experience. Uh, John was telling me um, uh, you have firsthand experience of the countries that you come from. You know that we are a very privileged group of people here in the UK. Uh, and we, it behoves us to respond to the grace that we've received by being gracious ourselves and being generous with that that we have. Some of what you earn should be helping to make the world a better place. The world needs it. Um, and finally, I would say about generosity, the great thing about generosity is it keeps greed in check and it puts you in control. 
that said, I think that is what I want to bring to you. I think there's a lot more that could be unpacked from any of those things. Uh, it's really interesting to me to see how, uh, how much um, Nee's uh, presentation and my own seem to cover very similar ground. And maybe we've come at it from slightly different, different angles. But um, uh, it's, uh, you know, I believe that change is possible. The way you've been does not need to define you. And there's no reason why you should not be financially successful and live in financial freedom. Over to you, John. Uh, thanks, William, for, I think that's another very brilliant session. Uh, it's amazing that, you know, putting this together, and I never spoke with both of you individually and allow you guys speak together or share minds and share common okay. thoughts. And you, you know, presented exactly. your, you had your presentation done separately. And it's amazing how you guys are speaking something very, very similar, you know, which is, um, I think it's very, very, um, which is very good, you know, it's very, very good. So it just seems as if, yes, you're saying something very, very similar and um, it, 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 it's just amazing to see. So we're going to go into a session of Q&A, um, whereby we could have some questions um, for, for the speakers. It's the time that you guys who have been listening I've been thinking about some issues that you've currently faced and you want to address them directly with um, some of our Kindle speakers today. Uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat. I'm happy to read them. Or if you are bold enough to ask questions and you want to meet your phone, meet your camera and uh, to ask some questions, I think you, you, we are encouraged to do that. Um, but let, let me kick this off with, with a question um, I, to, to Williams because he gave some interesting statistics. Um, it, it just appears people in, in the developed world, like UK and the US, we seem to live, he gave us an average statistic of 2,595 um, pounds or dollars. It's the average debt people are owing in credit cards. I, I know you want us to run away from, from credit cards like a plague. We try to do that, but a lot of people, kind of people, it's not easy. Um, how do we, how do we discipline? And I know you might have touched base on it before. Some people will say, "Oh, I don't earn enough. That's why I have huge credit card debt." Mm -hmm. How do we get get around balancing that? Um, I know, looking at myself, the time I wasn't earning enough, and my credit card debt was a little bit high, and when my income picked up a great deal. And I find myself now paying off uh, a lot of those credit card, those card debts. But if you find yourself not earning well enough and your expenses are still a little bit high, how do you manage that? Well, I think there's an interesting, I, I think there is a, you know, I think we just need to identify where these things are coming from. There is a, there is a cultural pressure that, you know, that everything around is beautiful. You know, you see everyone's Facebook pages, they're all doing amazing things. They're going great holidays. They're doing, you know, educating their kids privately. They're all doing all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you should be doing that kind of thing. Somehow we have to live with the fact that, you know, you can be a secure person in your own self without having to live up to the expectations of you. That's the first thing. Second is that we have a, a, a bit of a, a, another cultural thing goes on in, in, around the UK with people who are ambitious. And I've heard it, the, the, this phrase used a lot, which is you've got to fake it until you make it. You know, it's like, you've got to live up to this kind of way because then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in the right group of people and then, you know, everything will come out right. So don't worry about, you know, you haven't got the money, just, you know, you've got a credit card. Listen, the reality is whatever you borrow on your credit card, you will be paying that and then some. Now, if you're, if you think something's worth hundred quid, and you really want to buy it and you pay it on a credit card for a start, it's 120 quid. <laughs> and, if you don't pay it off quickly, it might be twice as much as the, the price that was on the sticker when you bought it. So I think you just have to say, you know, I'm going to live within uh, my means. Now, oh, clearly, um, that I'm not talking to a person who's sort of, I don't know, in between jobs and has a particular, you know, salary expectation realistically he's going to get to, and there's a gap and he's, I mean, I wouldn't advise it. I don't think it's a good idea, but that's kind of somewhat understandable. But this idea that you, you will, your lifestyle has to be supported by a credit card, you know, the reality is what cannot be supported will not be supported. It'll, you, it, you might be fine for this month, you might be fine for next month. Three, eventually it'll come down on you 
in spades. So the sooner you accept that this is the lifestyle you can afford and you have to live within, within that, the better. You will learn, there are easy, there's easy and hard ways to learn and I generally prefer the easy way. Uh, but if not, you'll learn it the hard way. But credit cards are, personally, I think they're, you know, I think it's fascinating to see that the average interest rate is 20%. We live in a world in which, you know, mortgages are what, 3%? Um, whether the bank interest rates are close to zero. In Germany, bank rates are negative. Inflation is zero, going to be zero for a long time. And yet credit cards can charge anything up to 50%. It's absolutely nuts. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would, I don't know whether that helps to answer the question, John, or whether I've just ranted. No, no, you did not. Um, any questions? <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat here. I've seen to get some questions. So, a question. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, hi. Um, my question is, um, is, is um, in this kind of perspective, it says that uh, the points that we raised, that, that you guys have raised, very brilliant, very uh, traditional, biblical, and uh, insightful. And I really appreciate that. But I think to an extent, it's becoming a bit generic and obsolete uh, in the sense that uh, the most prudent people in the meltdown of 2008, when we had kind of financial crisis, everybody or probably most people that follow this principle uh, <clears throat> prudently, a lot of them went bankrupt and um, they lost their money. And it to, they had to build up, re retrain and build up from the scratch and, and then got to the point where they are in 2020 now. And then we have this COVID uh, crisis. And I will say that uh, the three months uh, strategic fund that you have, that you can sustain yourself with for, um, for the time that you have your uh, having any job or whatever it is, uh, that, those three months, I mean, the three-month fund is not sufficient to sustain people these days because there are some people that have been hit by this crisis for the past six months yeah. go and they don't even have a future hope because the application they're sending, the, the jobs that they're, they're sending, they don't even get responses. So uh, do we have some, something like um, a plan, sort of like a, a new sort of like plan, maybe five-point plan, that is more relevant to the times that, because we can't be too sure that in the next 10 years, we're not going to have another crisis that's causing meltdown, that people that are prudent will still suffer these kind of problems. So um, that's the question. Thank I think you. That's a, that's a very insightful question, Yinka. Thank you very much indeed. I do think that I would, I'll, I'll hand over to Nia in a minute. For myself, I would say that um, we are trying to follow the Pareto principle here, that um, eighty percent of people aren't doing any of these things, and and if if that wasn't if if you know I, I take your point that it's it's fairly conventional advice. Most people don't do it and they don't follow it. it it's and otherwise we wouldn't. Have those statistics that I gave about the state of the UK, uh, uh, if you like, uh, households would not be true if people were just doing the basics right. Now I think what you're pointing to is very extreme, stressful situations. We've done the prudent stuff and actually put themselves in a position may still be in trouble. I, quite, I take your point. Uh, they'll be in far less trouble than people that have done nothing to, to prepare for themselves, but that still doesn't answer your question, I think, in full. Um, and I, I would say that, you know, we are, we've now, it used to be every 10 years you had have a, a major financial crisis. Um, we are getting, these things are coming through more often than they used to. And, I, and whereas I don't have answers to them, we don't know necessarily where the next one is coming from. It certainly won't be precisely the same shape as the 2000 financial, 2008 financial crash. It won't be the same as this epidemic. There'll be something else along. And, it, and uh, depending on a credit card or depending on the government or depending on other people, you will have to take some degree of agency to be in a position to get through this at all. And these are, these are basic building blocks. Once you've got the basics, there's some other things you can start looking at. Uh, I'll hand over to you, Nii. I'm sure you've got more wisdom on that. Uh, I just want to add a few things. Uh, thank you, Yinka, for what you 
what for your question the three months that you talked about is actually supposed to be the minimum but for most people because they had nothing let me give you let me give you an example of myself oh you can, okay an example of myself when i found out i had nothing no savings nothing at all we joined i mean isa was available everybody was doing isa we had nothing we started with 10 pounds a month that was where our saving because we we just had to decide something has got to change we didn't have anything there had been if there had been a a, a financial crisis in 2001 we would have been we would have been done for thank god we i, I had a job my wife had had her business you understand things that people used to do before things are changing the, the, the crisis that we are that our parents faced are not the same thing we are facing now and it's not going to be the same thing that our, our children are going to face things are changing and we need to roll along with it in the olden days or let me well not too old in 20 30 people used to work for only one company and at the end of it and at the end of it they pay your pension you are you are fully okay and stuff like that you can't depend on pension right now people have to have a lot of sources of income not just one because you know crises are going to come those are one crisis are some of those some of those constants they usually come with every seven to ten years you have a big financial one but for some people there are some crises that are always there all we're trying to do is that when you have your emergency fund your crisis your, your crisis level will, they will change it's like you will, you will have them less when somebody who doesn't have any money right now he doesn't have any emergency fund if tire bus or let's say we use heaters here let's say the heater goes goes wonky something happens to it number one they're going to have money problem and they're going to have if it happens in the middle of winter you're going to have a crisis you understand if you have an emergency fund you are able to take care of it will just be a, an inconvenience not a money crisis and what you've been doing before you will do it again you understand what I'm trying to say? The problem is that many people are not doing it. We keep saying the same thing. I know you said it's like the same thing we've been saying, but they're doing it. We'll move on to the next one. Many people don't have an emergency fund, nothing. There are lots of people that you can say, get me 1,000 pounds right now. There's something that you that's going on. There's a business, you understand? Just even say there's a business that's going on. Some people cannot put 1,000 pounds down now and say, I want to be part of that business. So it's as if the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer because the rich, they have the money, are, 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 the money sets. He said, this is my smart money, which I'm going to use. Many of us, many of our people here, they're using their, their, their survival money as if it they to a sweet money. You understand? They buy stuff before taking care of what needs to be taken care of. And then when the job now goes, it's like every, everything now, everything, everything just crumbles. And that's not the way we want to do it. So when we talk about the, the um, it's like with the things we're talking about, talking about uh, fund and stuff like that, and having little, little business here and there, because our people, they need, to start, they need to start doing this thing. There are we will talk about business another, another day anyway. It's like today we're just talking about defense. Defense is what we're talking about today. What we need to do. When you, when you, are, when you are well defended financially, you'll be able to use the extra money with some wisdom you be able to use it so that some extra money will start will start coming in you use that money to bring other money inside you understand what i'm trying to say so like uh, like william has already said there are people that don't have anything at all it's like they're not doing anything at all but we want people to start doing something no matter how small it's just like what you said to us you said um the slide that you gave us you said it's simple it's not easy start small and work hard and stay consistent it's as simple as abc the good book says when the cloud when the cloud is full it drops down the rain there are some things that have to happen because of some, some things that have been put in place you understand if you put things in place when it's time for some particular thing to happen they will happen if they don't happen then you need to check am i doing the right thing or or or, or something is wrong i don't know if i've if i've gone off what you're what you're asking or i'm still there yeah, th thanks for that. Um, just to take just a few more questions before we wrap up for today. Um, is anyone want to ask any questions? Um, can I comment on that, please? Oh yeah, first, yeah, Tayo. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Um, when it comes to financial uh, management, it's something that is dynamic. Mm. 
and uh, it changes, it's relative. So what uh, mode you used two years ago, three years ago, might not this really year. work this year. Yeah. Another thing is it's also specific to the environment you are in, to the economy you own. So uh, all the uh, all the ideas that have been listed, the five plans, they can work and they do work. So they are not the problem, but it's how we employ them mm. and the environment in which we employ them that matters. Okay. So it's good to avoid debt if you can. There are times when some issues, somebody is sick and I mean, of cancer and has to be treated, you definitely have to cough out the money and that can pull you uh, into, into debt. Yeah. Uh, some of the reasons why we get into debt in Africa is we have brothers and sisters that we support in school. But I mean, you need to have a plan and you need to ensure that at least you work as much as possible plan. I mean, like has been said, some things are, are your needs and some things are your wants. Mm. The things that are your wants will not really, really take anything out of you if you don't have them. You are not going to die. But if you continue to spend money on them, they will continue to drain uh, 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 your source uh, of fund. So, uh, I mean, uh, these things are not uh, a discussion for just one hour or two hours. Mm. It has to do with individual specific uh, 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 finances. Really? I mean, the first thing you need to is how do I maximize my income? You must work on how to maximize your income, look at other avenues, uh, take advantage of every opportunity to increase your income, and you must look at ways of minimizing your expenditure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we say minimizing your expenditure, we are talking about controlling it. We are not talking of, about reducing it now. We are not talking about cost reduction. You might be buying cheap things that keep breaking down and you have to replace them more mm -hmm. than someone who is buying something quality and good. And that doesn't mean you have to, to pay a, a, a premium to buy expensive things. Mm. I mean, there are some clothes that we buy that are too expensive that we don't really need. So we need to think of how to control our cost. So uh, uh, what we need to now do with the five points is how do you mix and match? If you are in an environment that doesn't pay interest on your saving, do you really need to save when you have a loan to pay off? Mm. What should be your first option? Is your, should your first option be reduce uh, 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 the loan? I mean, I personally don't really have any savings, mm. but I mean, I've almost paid off. off. Brilliant. I've got an insurance that covers me. So in, in case any life insurance, anything happens, my, my, my family is covered. So we Good. need to be looking at that. When the, 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 uh, the COVID things came up, I froze my mortgage thinking my income would be affected. At the end of the day, the income was not affected. So, mm -hmm. and I've, I've come back. So the, the thing is, we, we live in a dynamic environment yeah. and we need, need to look into our personal specific yeah. of how. So what works in UK may not work in America. Mm -hmm. What works in America may not work in Nigeria because mm -hmm. there are some specific that has to do. In Nigeria, people don't get mortgages to build houses. Yeah, yeah. So you have to work, you have to save the money and you have to build it. But yeah. here you can save to build or to buy. You've yeah. got, if you want to save, you wait forever and the price will keep going up. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. it's the, I mean, they're just, I mean, all the, all the, the five and the seven that we, just, we had for the, the, the ideas that will work, but it just depends on how we manage them. So that's yeah. my contribution. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, I'll have to leave now because I've got another meeting. That's fine. Thank you. Thanks Thank for that contribution. Okay. Uh, we have Peter who wants to ask a question. Yeah, Peter. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Ni and uh, Williams. Uh, much appreciated uh, uh, presentation you guys gave to us. Uh, my question is this. Uh, is um, investing, you know, uh, investing using funds from your savings, is it is it wise? That's one, please, if you don't mind. It's investing using your savings funds, you know, wise. That's taking money from your savings to invest. Yeah. Then um, 
uh, is it is it also uh, proper for one to uh, you know when you have according to me uh, emergency uh, funds uh, I, I take that for William that's your savings uh, savings funds you know mm. um, now when you have emergency is it is it also cool to you know go go to your savings and you know you take out from your savings because I'm much of a saver. And uh, to tell the truth, it's, it, it hurts me so much. I get a, bit, a little bit grumpy when I see my savings depleted. You get me, you know, because I, I, feel, I feel I'm not doing too well, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I want to find out, please. That's a great question. Um, just a quickie on that one. I would say um, that, yes, that your savings are there for that. So, in other words, um, you have the predictable expenses and then you have unpredictable expenses. You know, and and Tayo made the point perfectly well. Illness, uh, you know, things happen. You have emergencies. You have crises. Um, the reality is, most of us seem to we've experienced all those things, and yet we don't budget for them. Like, it's like in the past they've happened, but in the future they're never going to happen. So therefore, we don't need to provide for them. The reality is, they always do happen. So you need some of that. So I would say you think about your savings in three categories. One is uh, money that you can hold on to for the moment because you know the bills are coming later. That's kind of immediate. That's your, your, your if you like, sinking fund. Uh, you have money for, you don't quite know what for, but you know something will come along and ask for it. So that's that for that. And then you have money that you won't, you know, you might be saving over five years or, I don't know, moving house or something like that. And then finally, you have some money which is very long term for... Uh, retirement for, for the sake of argument. Um, what you do is you want to try and treat all th those three differently. If you invest them all the same way, your short term money will be too risky and your long term money won't be risky enough. So to keep the same level of risk, you have to adjust it for time. So it is wise to invest in, say, the uh, good companies that are growing and delivering value for people where your, the value of your, your stock will go up with the value of that company over a long period of time. But over a short period of time, that growth will not be linear. There'll be a lot of volatility in it. And you might need to get out at a moment when the value is, is low. So I would, I would avoid stock investments or short share investments for less than periods of less than five years or so. Um, and for money that you, you know that you're gonna to have to spend, you know, in the three months time to pay your car insurance, you just have to keep it in cash, even if the return on cash is zero. You know? that's, kind of, that's just the way it is at the moment. So, um, so yeah, so having it, thinking about is three pots, so if you like short term, low, low risk, uh, uh, medium term, slightly more risk, longer term, longer risk makes sense. And yes, uh, now, you might say, well, I've got this brilliant investment and it's making me a ton of money. I don't want to liquidate that to pay for the short term thing. Fair enough. You might choose not to do that. But generally speaking, if, if, you, if you know what the money is there for, you'll use it pro properly when the moment comes. Over to you, Nia. Yeah, I think we're, we're, you are saying exactly what's on my mind. Each saving that you, that you make, you need to give it a name. Mm. Then if, if they don't have names, you will use them anyhow. Just like William has said, for your emergency fund, you know it has to be liquid, very liquid, but not too liquid. It's not something that you put under your pillow, that when the pizza man comes, that's what we used to pay him. No, it's, it's your emergency fund, but it needs, you need to be able to grab it when you need it. It should be in a savings account that you, that, you can, that you can get to very easily. If it's something that's supposed to be for the house, okay, you are saving for a new, a new uh, set of city in your, in your house. You put it in, an, in another account. You know you want to save it for the next six months. That's where that one is coming out from. That is it. If you don't give a name to these things, if you want to just save for the for the sake of saving, something like greed and selfishness will it will it will crop into into it somehow. You understand? Because you're just saving for nothing. You are sa you are saving. You want the money to be a lot. You understand? It is good for it to be a lot, but it has to have a purpose. If we're saving for no purpose, you won't be able to give the money out. Because for every stage that you get in, fi in finances, usually generosity goes from, it starts from day one. No, not until the time you get, is you get to, um, you become financially free. That's when you start becoming generous. No, generosity starts from the very beginning. 
you understand you keep going as as gen you start being keeping as generous as you can be without impacting your own your own um your own financial well-being you understand so when you want to save give it a name even if you want to save to give to people part part of my part of my um, income we call it we have a god account which we don't touch it is it's not the title or anything like that it's just an account where we put a certain percentage in somebody needs money for something there are some people that you know you want to help them but you don't actually have it so we put those money in there when when it, it gets to a certain stage we'll give it to somebody that god puts in our in our mind in our hearts you understand we, we call it that god account. so every account has a name every saving that you have no matter how many how many you have as long as they have a name they will do what you want them to do that's just my uh, contribution back to you john thank you. yeah thanks for that i think time is fast spent but I, I want to ask one more question. Um, you might have someone here today um, that is very much in debt uh, to the point whereby he's almost been declared bankrupt or uh, wants to declare some form of bankruptcy or something and doesn't know how to get out of it because what he has to pay in terms of servicing the loan, I mean, the, the credit card, not even for mortgage now, but just general, mainly on the credit card and he doesn't know how to get out of it. Um, what advice would you give to that kind of person? On um, Can that person also reach out to you one-on-one -on -one for one-on-one -on -one personal counseling and how we can get around that situation? Um, let, me, let me take this one. When it gets to that point that you can't service your loans or credit cards anymore, don't keep quiet. Do you understand? You need to reach out to your, to your creditors. You need to tell them something is happening. I can't service this thing anymore. One of the things I usually tell people to do, call them for the first instance, call them, this is what's happening, and then write to them. You understand? But when you write to them, you need to now give them your budget. This is what I have coming in. This is what I have going out. This is how much I can pay you. Can you please freeze my accounts? You understand? They do it. You understand? They will freeze the account. You will not be able to use that card anymore. And they will not add best into it. That's how good they can be. But the thing is that if we don't talk to them and you start defaulting, that's where they, 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 will, they will not listen to you. You understand? Once we get to the point that things are getting bad, you need to write them. There are, there are letters that I have that I can, I can dish out for anybody that's in that kind of situation. That you can just, just write the letter add some stuff to it, send it to your creditors and see what happens. Usually my, my clients, even though some of them are not Christians, but we'll pray. We'll pray on the letter, I'll pray, I'll pray for them. They send the thing forward and it happens. Like sometimes we even call the credit card companies. Some people are not in, they're not so deep into, to get to that point you're talking about. But it's like they're of interest. We'll call the credit, credit cards, we'll tell them to reduce to reduce the interest interest rates. Some of them, they reduce the interest rate. There was a lady that I did this thing for, but just, it's just on the telephone. I was telling her what to say, and she was saying it. Yeah. We call it the Lucy game. All you're going to get is no. You understand? Yeah. But what if they say yeah. yes? Why don't we try? That was what we did. From 18.9%, they, they brought it down to 12.9%. They gave her 24 months. They said we do 24 months of that. You understand? which means her interest, yeah, her interest went down. If she was paying exactly the same amount she was paying before, she will, she will pay a lot down on, on that credit card. And that was what we did. There are lots of things that can be done. Yeah. As long as you don't just keep quiet, the person should don't please. That's my... Uh, William, do you want to add to that? I don't know. Can't add anything. That's brilliant. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So please, um, if anyone has any situation that you really need some help and any one-on-one counseling as regards this, I think practical advice. I think, as um, Tyler said, we can't exhaust this in this session. I think one-on-one -on -one will be very key. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Or if you don't have his details, um, feel free to contact me and I'll give you his details or you could put his details on the, on the chat or could reach out to William as well. I think they'll be very more than happy to um, support you and to guide you. I think that's the intention of these uh, webinars. Let it not just be something theoretical, you listen and, and you just go away. Nothing happens. We want to make a difference. I think that's the whole essence behind like mind to, to, to support ourselves, to impact ourselves positively and bring about that desired change. So through this network, um, you're able to achieve that. 
So um, thanks everyone for, for today. I know we've way past our time, but thanks. I can see up to 50 people still waiting at the time we were uh, getting to almost 70. So I want to appreciate everyone who's taking time to wait even up to this time. And um, yeah, I just want to say a huge thanks so much. So uh, if you want a copy of the slides, feel free to send uh, us an email, uh, likeminds88 at gmail.com. Uh, I'm happy to share with you a copy of the slides. If you want to know more about uh, like minds, I think I pasted our, our details. I think I'll paste it again. Uh, feel free to look at our website, um, likemindsuk.com. We are an African professional network um, in the UK. Uh, aiming at supporting uh, African diasporas in any professional capacity, whether for manpower development or any form of enrichment. So, and so thanks everyone. Um, feel free to touch base with us, and, um, and you have a good day. So Brilliant. let's so let's be bold enough to put our cameras, remove our cameras, um, so we can say hello to everyone before we go. <laughs> Come on, guys, let, let's see your faces before we go. Let's say hello. Hello, yeah. William. Hello, Ni. Nee. Hello, John. Hi. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Shola, good to see you. Thanks, Colin. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Thank you, John, for hosting this. Marvellous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thanks so, so much. Let's see who is still there. Thanks, yeah. John. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank 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 you. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Shola. Thanks, 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 thanks so, so much. Thanks. Thanks, thanks guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great stuff. To the All right. Thanks, Sam. Have a good thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. And, um, thanks. Hi, John. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. What do we Hi, have there? Yo, oh, yo, good to see you. That's you. Hi, That's John. You. Yeah, I'm there. Hi, William. Oh, Hi. That's good. Yeah, great to see you. How are you? Very good. Very Gosh, good. there's so many friends here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, that, that's good. All right, brilliant. thanks everyone. To want to All right, thanks. Julie, Have thanks a good night. Have a good evening. Brilliant. Right. Thank you so much for all your, your, your Thank wisdom. You. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you, John. God bless. God bless. Bye bye.